About six months ago, Mercedes presents the new G-Wagon, but until now you can only order that car with the G500, that means a big petrol engine, or the G63 AMG. Now they offer the first diesel version, and that car features a 3-litre V6, but a lot less power than the big petrol ones. And today we're going to find out how that engine works with the car, and of course I'm going to present you some information about the new G-Class in general. The new G-Class has grown a lot and the car now is about 5 centimeters longer than its predecessor and I think more important 12 centimeters wider and that on one hand gives the, car, gives the car a very solid stance and on the other hand that provides a lot more space at the interior but now we're going to have a closer look about is this still a real G-Class and what does it make a G-Class. When you look at the design of the car you do find some features which completely reminds you to the old one which is look at the hood. The hood is on top of the rest of the car something you wouldn't find at any other car anymore and you do have these indicators here which are on top of the wheel arches as well so it's completely special and of course we do still find round headlamps something that you will remember uh, when you look at the old one and when you then come to the side of the car you, you instantly see that car is still very boxy so this is the typical G wagon design we have I look, think it looks more like a fridge than like a modern car a very steep uh, front window but this is something this is typical for the G-Wagon. And then when you look at the wheel arch, it's still very boxy. We still have this extra here at the side. Uh, this is a bit less than with the old one, but now the car has grown, so it, you have to put it somewhere. When you then come here, you see this is typical for a G-Wagon. You would not find any of these hinges at any other car anymore. And then we have these door handles. They really look like the old one. So that really is a very solid door handle. And by the way, we we'll me with this. That's G-Class as well. When we then look at the rear of the car, what you do find here is you have this big door at the rear of the car, again the solid handle, and of course you have the extra wheel here on top of the car, and that is absolutely typical G. The first thing that you hear when you start the diesel engine of the G-Class and when you then start driving is that you do not hear the engine because the engine is so quiet that the only thing you can hear inside of the car is the ventilation of the air condition. Of course, this changes when you do give the car a bit more power, but it's still a very nice noise of the engine and it's, it doesn't feel like a real diesel sound. Driving through this uh, countryside here with these tight turns, with this big G-Wagon, of course you feel a little bit of the weight of the car, but it's very comfortable to drive. And Interestingly, when you change into sport mode, the car is getting more, let's say, static. You don't have any rolling or something like it, so it's a lot more stable. And then you can really have some fun. Even though the car is quite heavy and big, you can really drive the car very nicely through these tight turns. And very important is it's still so comfortable that you completely forget to turn back into comfort mode. The Mercedes G350D optionally offers the widescreen cockpit with its two 12.3-inch displays. Unfortunately, there is neither MBUX or a touchscreen available for the G. But it offers the driver to choose between classic, sport and progressive screen mode to customize the look of the displays. The interior of the new G-Class really is a lot more modern. For instance, we do have as an optional feature these two 12.3-inch screens in front of us covered with one piece of glass. So that really is a big widescreen. And uh, on the other hand, the car features a lot of things that, you, that may remind you to the old G-Class. Like we do have this handle here at the passenger seat, or we do find these three very prominent buttons for the differential locks. And of course, we do have the air outtakes, which are really reminds you of the old one. Talking about the space of the car, that really has changed completely because of the extra uh, regarding to the dimension of the car we do have a lot more space in here for instance i do have nearly seven centimeters more elbow space here at the front and i think very important is for the passengers on the rear seats they do now have about 15 centimeters of more legroom and they re re this really is a big step but interestingly um, I couldn't sit, or I can't sit behind myself, uh, but I think a standard adult 
would easily fit behind another one. The seat position as well as the seats themselves are very comfortable inside of this new G-Class. And what I really do like the most with it is you sit so high inside of the car that it feels like you're above the scenery outside. With a new diesel, there are now three different powertrains available for the G-Wagon. And these are the two well-known petrol, the G500 with 422 horsepower and the AMG version with 585. Both of them are V8 engines. The diesel is a lot smaller. This is a six-cylinder, three-liter engine, and that only offers 210 kilowatts or uh, 286 horsepower, but 600 newton meters of maximum torque. But I think more important is this car should take less than 10 liters uh, in average per 100 kilometer driven. So I think you could save some money with that engine. My first idea when I've heard that the new diesel engine will only deliver 286 horsepower was, is this enough for the big heavy G-Wagon? But now that I drove the car, I have to say, even though we do have about 160 less than the G500, that car with its 286 horsepower combined with the 600 newton meters of maximum torque and the 9G Tronic really makes a great job in the car because on one hand you can really drive the car very smooth and easy. On the other hand, when you go into sports mode, you can really have a, let's say, quite agile car and that provides you with some driving pleasure. And so I think that the G350D is really featuring the perfect engine for this kind of car and this engine is delivering more than enough power because when you want to accelerate the car really kicks off not the same way as the G500 or AMG does but more than enough. So now we took our G-Class to a place which is the home for loads of G-Classes. We're talking about the forest and we're driving a path here which is of course not heavy off-road but the surface is very wobbly and very stony and what we do here is enjoying the comfort of the new G-Class even on this surface. The off-road capabilities of the G-Wagon are well known and this is the same with the new model. It still of course features all-wheel drive uh, several differential locks and 24 centimeters of ground clearance. The new one features 70 centimeters of weighting depth. That, that's 10 more than with the predecessor. But if you think that's not enough, you're gonna have that fella here that comes from Mercedes as well. It's called Unimog, and with that car, you can go everywhere. 